Hi there. I'm Mark Van Over, and I wanted to thank you for joining us tonight at Back to School Night. Um, what an unusual school year we are having so far. And, and of course, it's fitting for the unusual times that we're all experiencing as well. But I am glad that you were able to, to come tonight and see um, what your student is learning in their world history class for college prep world history. Um, I'm really happy to have your student and I'm really happy to um, have the opportunity to work with them. And I feel that even despite the virtual environment, I'm actually getting um, to know some of your students as well as I possibly can. And I, I like that. What I want to make sure I talk with you a little bit about is just, you know, kind of what our class is. And uh, I thought I'd first tell you about me, though. Um, I think it's probably helpful to know a little bit about the person that's beaming into your home every day. Um, so first of all, thanks for allowing me to be a guest. Um, I'm from originally from a small town in Illinois called Pontiac. Um, it's about 90 miles south of Chicago and no one's heard of it. So I just tell people I'm from Chicago. Um, I moved to Arizona when I was 13. I went to school there, um, high school in Glendale, Arizona, and then I went to Arizona State University at the Tempe campus. Uh, and I majored in secondary education with my emphasis in history, um, so a double major, and I minored in political science. And so this is something I've always wanted to do. Um, I've also been here at CCA um, since 2000, well, 2005. Um, I came here to the district 15 years ago um, and started here at CCA, one of the original uh, teachers in the social science department and one of two that actually remain. Um, I did go to LCC in our district here for a couple of years where I was an administrator. Uh, I did not enjoy being an administrator quite the same way that I enjoy being a classroom teacher. So I did uh, decide to come back to the classroom and fantastic that I was able to do that and to do it back here at CCA, um, which is a very, very special place. And I'm thrilled to be here. And uh, this is my 23rd year of doing this. And it doesn't seem possible with these useful good, good looks, but um, it has been that long. Um, and boy, time flies when you are having fun. So uh, I'm, like I said, thrilled to be here and um, tell you a little bit more about world history. Um, the class is a modern world history class. So the last time that they had world history was when the students were in seventh grade. Uh, that covered more of like classical antiquity through, say, the Renaissance um, and age of exploration. Uh, so we look at things from approximately, approximately 1700 to as close to the present as we can get. And the biggest units or topics of study um, tend to be, for example, we're, we've been working on the evolution of Western political tradition, um, which basically is a fancy way of saying um, democratic thought. Um, and uh, we've been kind of doing that a little more deliberately because we're in an election year. So it's a really good time to talk about things like rule of law and consent of the governed and limited government. Uh, 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 illegitimacy of tyranny is another part of the curriculum. Uh, those things that have kind of evolved over various centuries and various events. So we're looking at Greece and Rome. We're looking at the Magna Carta in England. We'll be looking at the English Bill of Rights. We'll be looking at um, even the American um, Constitution um, so that we can see some of the, the ways in which this has evolved throughout the world. Then we're going to move into the to the revolutions. I call that both the, the national revolutions and the industrial revolutions and their impacts, um, not just in the European realm, but um, with national revolutions, there's a series of revolutions that happen um, in South America, in the new world, uh, and well as, as well as kind of changing the overall landscape of how uh, things like royalty uh, and such are concerned. So this is where we look at, say, the um, American Revolution, the glorious revolution that came before that in England, French Revolution, and then some of the Latin American revolutions. Uh, we look also at European nationalism and imperialism. And so the story of nationalism, um, nation building in Europe, and then the ensuing kind of competition to colonize as much of the world that wasn't already colonized um, is 
an interesting topic as we are in a shifting environment today about colonialism and its legacies um, and how that has played out into our modern day uh, social, uh, socially aware, uh, more socially aware systems that we have across the world today. Um, so we look at England, uh, Germany, France, Italy, and their attempts to Belgium, Netherlands, and their attempts to carve up um, parts of Southeast Asia, Africa, China, um, and so that we can uh, get a sense of what that climate was like. We move into World War I and the revolution, um, Russian Revolution after that. It um, gets into a little more political ideology at that point, seeing what exactly kind of took hold during the Russian Revolution. And of course, the ideology of trying to make World War I the war that would end all wars. Um, we then look at the interwar period, which is in, especially in Europe, is very much like the interwar period in the United States, which is kind of you know marked by uh, some economic boom followed by um, intense depression. Um, but we also see at that time the European countries and Southeast Asian company, countries are um, combating a rise of totalitarian regimes. So we look at that at the time. Um, we obviously look at World War II, and of course that involves um, the topic of the Holocaust and um, seeing some of the um, genocidal atrocities that were committed at that time. Cold War, so we get to do the whole um, spies, nuclear war threats, um, arms race, uh, that whole that whole perspective, but from a world perspective as opposed to simply a U.S. perspective. Um, and then we look at the modern period as close as we can get to it on a on a schedule that is greatly reduced by um, the the unique schedule we're on. We also um, talk a little bit about the kinds of assignments that you'll see. It's not a homework heavy class. They may have some viewing assignments that they may do from home, which are usually, they're intended to either reinforce a concept that we are looking at in class, or they might actually have um, a little bit of prep for the next day to get them ready for the content that we'll look at so that we might be able to do a little more, a little less explaining of new things and more kind of interpreting the stuff that they have learned. Um, a lot of times that will be kind of um, assessed by bell work assignments, little short assignments at the beginning of class that would be related to, say, a viewing assignment that they've had, or maybe a short specific reading assignment that they may get. Uh, so those things are um, always a, a possibility for um, either just kind of mini quizzes maybe on what the content was to even some interpretive writing to try to deepen some of those analytical skills. We'll also be looking at, they'll be reading their textbook and that will be the most common thing that you'll see from them on a consistent basis. Even if they say they have nothing to do, they probably could be reading their textbook and studying. Um, and there will be guides that will be given out for that. And again, these, these first, first couple weeks are kind of light and then the intensity picks up a little bit. So you may have not seen them with their books just yet. And then occasionally we might try to bring in some works from other historians with exerted journal articles that kind of look at how other historians have interpreted some of the history that they're looking at. And then that would give them kind of a, a basis to be able to discuss things a little further. With distance learning, you're probably hearing some terms that are new to you, such as synchronous work. Um, synchronous learning is essentially that work that is happening during class uh, with the 60-minute period that we meet on a daily basis. It's basically the live sessions that your students are meeting with us on Google Meet. And, and we work as a whole class or with even some smaller breakout groups to kind of give at least as close to a school experience as we possibly can. The asynchronous work is work that might be given that would normally be accomplished in class, but because we are on a shortened schedule and we don't want kids sitting in front of a screen for six to seven and a half hours a day, um, we would like to limit their screen time. This is stuff that they can work on independently of the live session. It's not the same thing as homework in the sense that it was, it's basically attempting to recreate as, as simply as possible something that normally would be done in class. College prep world history is not a class that's going to have that happen very often, but it is possible. And um, homework then, of course, is 
just the plain old homework like it's always been. Um, again, college prep world is not a homework heavy class other than the reading that kids should be doing. Um, but it should not be anything that's causing a student to spend hours and hours on their own. With communication, you can expect to get some updates for things like grades and such. Um, when we're in person, uh, if we are in person, there is Illuminate, and Illuminate is a good way to get grades um, from tests. But uh, in the time being, we won't be um, using that platform. It's not really conducive to a distance platform at the moment. Uh, parents can get access to their students' Google Classrooms. The Google Classroom parent access, I can either send a request your way if I know you want one, or I think there's a way for you to see when your student is logged in and you can um, sign up for that. And it'll send an, you know, like a weekly update of work that's been assigned and what they've done and turned in. I will say that it's not always going to be 100% accurate because sometimes the work that's assigned is ungraded work that's maybe to get ready for that bell work that might be the next day. And so I put it in there because kids find it helpful to have that kind of reminder system there and it puts it on a calendar for them. Uh, but it won't necessarily have a product that they turn in to be graded. All official grades will be on the Aries gradebook. And the Aries gradebook um, gives you a couple things, one of which is new. Obviously, there's the grades, but there's also engagement levels. And so the state of California is requiring that teachers indicate the level of engagement a student has in a distance learning environment or even in a hybrid environment where they might be in class at some point. That means that we have to kind of say they're either fully engaged or not engaged or partially engaged. And that information is on ARIES under the attendance. Um, if I ever find a student who's not engaged, as best as I can gauge that in a distance environment, then I will have that information included with some notes that you can then view in attendance. There's, of course, the traditional progress report route. And then on an as needed basis, you're always welcome to contact me anytime, just as I will um, for you if I if I see something of concern. It's always good to give a heads up um, to me if you know of something that I should be looking for. Um, you know, like maybe chronic not doing work um, in the past or something that I can maybe help uh, intervene with uh, sooner than I might normally catch that. If you ever want, you or your students actually ever want to contact me, there is um, there are office hours available where I am able to be reached um, via a Remind um, app. Remind is a texting service that allows students to use their smartphones to contact teachers and vice versa. It allows um, no uh, telephone number exchange. Um, they don't have my number. I don't have theirs. Uh, it's all kept as a record, so it could always be requested. And um, if they don't want to have a, a, an app downloaded to their phones, they can do it through traditional text messaging where um, it just uses um, anonymized, an, an, <laughs> anonymized numbers um, so that they're not, again, I'm not getting a text from them and seeing their number and they're not seeing mine. Um, they can always reach me right away. And I, instead of having the computer on sitting in front of a, a camera, um, I can hop online really quick if they have a question or they need, some, they need some assistance in any way during those office hours and likely could be done at different times as well. There's also my email. Email I check a couple times a day, but there's always a chance that an email could come in after I just checked it. And I may not see it again till the next day. Uh, so if you don't get something back right away, don't be alarmed. Um, but we are getting volumes and volumes of email, much more normal, much more than normal right now with the distance learning environment. So it wouldn't be hard for something to get really buried um, over the course of a day. So if I did miss an email from you, please don't hesitate to send another one and just say, you know, like, dude, you, what's going on? Um, I, uh, it's appreciated. Um, you can always look for information on my website. World history is a class I haven't taught for a, for a few years, so I'm kind of rebuilding that portion of my site. Um, but you'll see that what's there. And then, of course, if you ever want to meet with me, we have um, the ability to do a face-to-face -face meeting through Google Meet um, after 3 p.m., um, after the office hours are done. So I'd be happy to do that at any time as well. 
that's pretty much what I've got for you. I hope I haven't taken too much time. I don't see a timer and, and I can talk a lot, but I'm really happy that you took some time to, to join us um, virtually tonight and to take a look at what your students are doing in school. And if you have any questions at all, uh, something I didn't cover or something that wasn't clear, please don't hesitate to let me know and contact me. Uh, again, I really appreciate you coming by. Have a great evening and thank you.